spicy Mexican eggs. This is a very classic Mexican-style brunch dish. Bold, kick-ass flavours. Slice the chilli, seeds in. Garlic sliced, nice and thinly. Tablespoon of olive oil. I'm a big fan of brunches. And if you get it right, a great brunch can see you right through to dinner. Now, to start the sort of spicy, fragrant tomato sauce, get your cumin in there. Garlic, chilli. Roasted cumin, red onions, already sounds Mexican. Once that starts getting really nice and crispy, in with your tomatoes. Never be embarrassed using good canned tomatoes. I do it all the time, cooking at home. Now, by reducing that, you sort of come down to a delicious paste. Leave that to simmer. Next, canned beans called black beans. These are authentically Mexican, but cannellini beans or chickpeas will work just fine. Just rinse them in a little bit of water. That is beautiful. Turn off the gas and just let it absorb. Leaving the dense beans to luxuriate in the spicy tomato sauce will allow them to soften and soak up all the flavor. Next, oil and season an oven-proof dish for my spicy egg brunch to bake in. And just get some of that oil round the outside. Take your corn tortillas, slice them in half, and then just stick them to the side. These are a staple in Mexico. Take one and place that in the center. Get your mix and place that on top of the tortilla. Spread that out nice and smoothly. Lift up those little flaps. I want that crisp shell on the outside. Now, your eggs and cheese. Get the base of the egg and just make a little hole in there and then crack the egg into there. Again, use a little point. Put your egg in there. One, two, three, four, five, and one in the middle. Gently crack and get the egg to sit inside, almost like it's a little dugout. And then one for the center. Get a really nice, rich, delicious, strong Montgomery cheddar. I want to grate the tortilla shell as well, so get generous with it on the top. I'm going to season that with these little babies, little chili flakes. They're my little secret weapon, and they're going to spice up that egg. A touch of salt, a touch of pepper. Sit that in the oven to bake for 8 to 10 minutes at 180. Smells incredible. Just a little bit of coriander to finish it off. And that, for me, is what brunch is all about. Let's go. A fantastic fiery brunch to get your party started. Spicy Mexican eggs in a crispy tortilla shell. Mouth-watering, smoky pulled pork with a spicy chipotle mayonnaise. That is the most amazing pork butt. Butts away, butts away. <laughs> now, this is incredible. There's the shoulder. Yeah. And look, there's the shoulder blade. If you go through here, there's a knuckle there. That's connecting the top, and that's why it's called wow. a butt. The slower you cook it, the more juicy it is. And it's great for big parties, because you just come along and get your fork and shred it. A delicious, smoky mayonnaise. And you're away. Onions into half and half again. OK, I'm going to leave the roots on, OK, because I want this to sit underneath the pork. It gives it a chance to cook evenly and doesn't get dry in the bottom. Really important. OK. Now, I'll peel the garlic. OK, I'd like you uh, to crush the garlic. We're going to make a really nice little paste. OK? Yeah. Go on, Maggie. <laughs> no! <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Nice. Good girl. Yes. One more. Crush. Come on, Maggie. I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> Sorry okay, about that. Let me just give that little cut there. Now, this is a beauty. Paprika. Smoked paprika. Oh, I love it. So three nice tablespoons in. OK. Two large tablespoons of brown sugar. Salt, please. And pepper. Good go. So we're going to form a nice paste now. 
Olive oil in. Mix that. Add some thyme in there. So we've got a sort of fragrant rub. Thyme stalks underneath. So that's even more flavour going on the bottom. Pour that all over it. Now, this is where you've got to be really quick. OK. And sort of rub that. Mash larger in almost. It's exactly that. It smells amazing. Honestly. If you just drizzle a little touch of olive oil on top of that for me. I want to keep the pork nice and moist. Lovely. Like some of the best party dishes, the marinating of the pork shoulder can be done days in advance. So if I was doing this for a Sunday, I'd start marinating. Thursday, Friday, so it gets even tastier. Right. It's quite easy as well to make. It's very easy. Five and a half to six hours in the oven. At 140. While our pork butt slowly roasts, Meg and I are going to pimp some shop-bought mayonnaise. I don't like just plain mayonnaise. There's so many things you, you can... You have a twist to it. Yeah, there's so many things, so many exciting things you can do with it. Right. Salt. Pepper. In. A little touch of honey. Sweetness. Almost, yeah, with the sweetness. Honey. But there's some heat coming. OK, and I've got a little bit of... You love this. Chipotle. Smoked chipotle oh, paste. I love that. Once you've made this dressing, you know, it can sit in the fridge. Great for open sandwiches, yeah. Can you use it for any sandwiches, really? Any sandwiches, but goes brilliantly well with pork. Now, just have a little taste. Mm, I've never had this before. It's so good. A nice spoon of mustard. So, that's a nice spicy mayonnaise. After five and a half hours in the oven, our pork is nearly ready. Just time to knock up a couple of tried and tested party favourites. First, deliciously simple, cheesy crushed potatoes. Cut potatoes into even chunks and submerge in salted boiling water, skins and all. Meanwhile, finely dice sweet pickled gherkins or cornichons. Trim and finely chop spring onions. And grate some nutty Gruyere cheese. When the potatoes are cooked through, drain, roughly crush and add your spring onions and gherkins. Season to taste and gently combine before a final sprinkling of grated Gruyere. These simple, cheesy crushed potatoes are equally delicious, served hot or cold. Now, I want something sort of raw, like a slaw, something quite refreshing. Yeah. So I'm going to make a really nice, fresh broccoli salad. Now, these are called florets. And that's the best part of the broccoli, mm -hmm. OK? The bit that everybody wants. Once they're off, I'm going to slice the broccoli, OK? Mm-hmm. Never had raw broccoli before. Oh. It's always been cooked. Really? When you dress this with the dressing, it's incredible. Now, a little season early on. Yeah. OK. Now for the dressing. Fresh sugar in. Teaspoon of sugar, please, darling. A little smell. Cider vinegar. Mm, in you go. A finely chopped shallot. In with the broccoli. So, mm, delicious. Roasted almonds into the broccoli. Currants. Mm. I love them. That gives that nice sort of chewy texture. Right, lift up your bowl, please. Nice and gently. Half of that in the middle, please. Thank you. And stop. And then mix that up with me. Good girl. A little taste. Mmm. Mmm. So good. And it's a kind of salad that doesn't wilt a couple of hours later. It's still crunchy because the broccoli's raw. Raw broccoli salad, chipotle. Mm -hmm. Now let me get the pork out. Look at this, look at this. Megan, honestly, that... Is amazing. It's beautiful. That is incredible. Now, that goes to the table like that. A Can delicious... we have a tiny bit just before we go to the table? Megan. Just a little bit. Honestly, Meg. Don't tell Mum. Thank you. Honestly. I feel like mm. I do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Man, it's incredible. So good. You promised me you don't give the recipe to your boyfriend. Let's go. Come on. This is my ultimate easy party dinner. Melt in your mouth, slow cooked, smoky pulled pork with a spicy chipotle mayonnaise. And quick, simple sides of crushed cheesy potatoes and a light and healthy broccoli slaw deliciously yummy dishes that will have your family, friends and work buddies coming back for more. The perfect side dish for my fantastic fried chicken. Jack! Hi. 
Mate, you going to help with some pickling, please? Oh, definitely. Now, you love pickles, right? Love pickles. Um, Favourite pickle, what is it? I like pickled onions. We're going to do pickled celery. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little snack and great for ploughmen, great for salads. First thing, I need to pick the celery for me. So you see where the next one's going to be. It's in there. Yeah. OK, I'll figure one. Well, I'm hungry today. Is this all we're having for dinner? Jack, come on. I wouldn't do that to you. You know that. There's more coming. Now, because we're pickling it, yeah. we want to sort of make it look a little bit more attractive. So we go around like that, OK, on an angle. So when you pick all the food, does it, does it preserve it? It's exactly what it does. But also it gives it a really nice, salty, soury flavour. Yeah. OK, now, splash of water and in with the sugar. Nice. OK. So we've got to bring that up to the bowl and sort of create almost like a little syrup. Yeah. OK? A little teaspoon of peppercorns in. Mustard seeds in. Quite generous on the mustard seeds. That gives it a bit of sort of spice. Now, those, you must know. Cloves. Excellent. Cloves in. Now, touch of salt in mm -hmm. there. OK? So from there, white wine vinegar. Now, in order for all that to actually pickle, you need to boil it. Mm -hmm. So by boiling it, OK, it brings all the ingredients together. Yeah. It infuses all the spices and helps cook the celery. Have a little taste. Mm. <coughs> nice. Nice. See, I put some hairs on your chest. Yes, oh, it will. Quick look. Boom, it's working already. Now, see? Mmm. Nice. Not <laughs> <laughs> white wine vinegar. <laughs> right, celery's ready. Yep. OK, that's all up to the ball now. Yeah. Turn that off. Now, from there, start Ooh. placing the celery into that jar. So when you pick all the foods, can you use that same recipe? Exactly that. 100%. Once it's pickled, it doesn't really go off. Mm -hmm. OK, now, put them in there. So can we eat this straight away when it's in here? Do you know what? As soon as it's cooled down, you can definitely eat that straight away. Can't wait to dig into it at dinner. Aren't they delicious? Yes. We'll leave that to cool down. Our pickles are ready and cooling. Now to marinate the chicken. When you fry chicken, traditionally, it's always going to be done with the dark meat, the brown meat. Yeah. So you've got that nice sort of uh, drum here yeah. and this bit, yeah. that thigh. Cooking on the bone as well keeps it even more moist. So, first things first, salt and pepper, please. Ooh, From there. Famous buttermilk. Buttermilk in. It's brilliant for marinating the chicken. If you can put this buttermilk over your chicken, the night before, the more it tenderises the chicken and starts to sort of really relax the chicken mm -hmm. and puts a really nice sort of creamy, soury flavour in there. Yes. So, Mike, stick that in the fridge for us, please. And we'll start the Dolce de Leche biscuits. Nice. The Argentinians call these shortbreads Alfa Jorge, and they're the favourite sweet treat on the streets of Buenos Aires. They're light, crumbly shortbread biscuits sandwiched with gloriously golden caramely Dolce de Leche sauce. For the shortbread, beat together softened butter, granulated sugar, and beat until light and fluffy. Add one egg, slice vanilla pods, scrape out the seeds, add to the mix, and beat again. Sift plain flour, corn flour, and baking powder. Then fold the mixture together. Using floured hands, roll into small balls. Flatten into discs and place on a baking tray. Chill for 10 minutes until firm to touch. Then simply bake for 10 to 12 minutes or until pale golden. Once cooled, Sandwich two biscuits together with a caramely dolce de leche sauce. Finish with a dusting of icing sugar. Delicious. My dessert and pickles are ready. The buttermilk should have worked its magic on the chicken. All that's left is to fry it. Now, we're going to roll the chicken out of the buttermilk into the flour. So that's why it gets nice and crispy and blistery on the outside. Mm -hmm. OK? Cool. So what we've got to make sure, because the flour is the last coat, yes. this is nicely seasoned. Yeah, definitely. OK? So salt and pepper in there. Nice. 
And this is smoked paprika. Smoked paprika. So that gives it a little bit of sort of... Uh, Redness. Yeah, spice. A little bit of, yeah, spice, that's right, a little bit of heat. And this one of my favourites. What's that? Cayenne pepper. That's right, again, slightly spicy, but the heat works brilliantly well. Garlic powder. Traditionally, are used a lot in the States. Onion powder, garlic powder. Just run your fingers through that, please. Cool. I'm going to get the pan on. Now, two centimetres of oil. This is a really good mix for fish as well. Mm -hmm. Goujons, whiting. Um, a nice spicy texture helps fish. So the first thing is we just shake off some of the buttermilk, lay that down. Yes. OK, really important to get them covered completely, OK, in the flour. Yeah. Okay. So. God, I love fried chicken. Do you? Now, lift that up there, the first one, and you place it in there, away from you. Off you yeah. go. Nice and gently. Good. And lay away. Good. If at any stage you think the oil is getting too hot, yeah. just add a touch of cold oil in there. Yeah. Or turn off the Definitely. gas. Good. Gently fry the chicken for 25 to 30 minutes or until cooked through. Now, very carefully. Turn them over, please, yeah? Cool. Can we have this every day? Jack, fried chicken every day? No, definitely not. It's a treat and it's shallow fried, so once every three weeks? Yeah, sounds great to me. Yeah? Now, off with the gas, OK? Yeah. Paper ready? OK. Onto the paper. Serve them. Oh, nice. Oh, I love fried chicken, I'm telling you. Pretty sure I love it more than and you. And look, here's the best bit. Delicious. Now, fried chicken and pickles. If you pick up um, Dolce de Leche cakes, we are ready, bud. Very nice. Let's go, bud. Delicious. Look cool, mommy. Wow. Tilly, feed me, mom. Divine Dolce de Leche biscuits, my pickled celery and buttermilk fried chicken. A soulful street food feast if there ever was one.